so today, as you can see, we've got the TARDIS up, got the side screwdriver, got a Doctor Who shirt even. So today, I'm going to be talking about Doctor Who, specifically Doctor Who spin-offs. Because Doctor Who spin-offs, over the years, they've, they've gone up and down in terms of quality. So we've had some pretty good ones, we've had some not so good ones, we've had some that have never come to fruition. Today, though, I'd like to talk about five specific spin-offs that Doctor Who kind of did over the years. Kind of ranging from the 1980s to the uh, late, to the mid-2010s. So, yeah, here we go. Now, as I said, there were some that were kind of planned but never came to fruition. For example, uh, shortly after Billy Piper left the series, they apparently were considering having a kind of series that focused on uh, Rose Tyler, kind of her adventures on Earth 2, shall we say, on Pete's world, kind of working, defending the Earth, Rose Tyler Earth Defense, but sadly that one never came to fruition. But anyway, these are the ones that did manage to come to fruition. The first time that you could say that Doctor Who did a spin-off was in 1981, kind of shortly after... Well, around the time that Tom Baker was leaving the series. The series only ran for one episode. It was planned to go into a series, but sadly never came to fruition. And it's K-9 and Company. Now, at the time, kind of K-9 and the other kind of classic companion from the show, Sarah Jane Smith, they were quite popular characters. They, they hadn't been seen together. They hadn't travelled together. K-9 didn't come along until after... Sarah Jane had left, so kind of pairing these two together okay, was a risky move, but yeah, you could kind of see where they were going, and as, I, as I'll as i say later on, it did end up being a good pairing, kind of later on, but for the time being, K-9 and Company only actually got one episode, one pilot episode. The episode was made for kind of like a Christmas special, and would lead into a spin-off, and it was called A Girl's Best Friend, and it debuted on the 28th of December, 1981. As I said, it was intended to kind of be a pilot, possible pilot for a spin-off, but sadly it kind of didn't really work, it didn't really go anywhere. I think it was also that, kind of at the time, the slave wasn't ready to come back yet, so it, it didn't go anywhere. The next time... The next one I'm going to talk about, it's debatable whether it was a supposed to be a spin-off or a continuation, but it was Doctor Who in 1996. I, in 1989, the show was cancelled, and in 1996, it was picked up by Fox. And Fox gave maybe saw a chance to kind of continue it. So, as I said, the Doctor Who movie, which I have seen through, and you know, for 1996, it's pretty good. But it was kind of supposed to lead into a whole loop, whole new series for them, which supposedly would have included new elements and kind of reworking of classic elements. For example, there was supposed to be a more kind of parascal version of the Cybermen known as Cybes. But yeah, that didn't quite work. And while it was popular, it wasn't necessarily enough to continue with. So after the TV movie, the show once again went into hibernation. But then we come to what's arguably the two most popular Doctor Who spin-offs. The first one, Torchwood. I've I as I mentioned kind of a little while ago, I recently finished watching Torchwood series two for the first time. Which I've grown to love the show. I was hesitant about it in the beginning, but I grew to love it. Now Torchwood ran from two thousand six until 2011. They managed to get 41 episodes out over four series. Series 1, Series 2, Children of Earth and Miracle Day. And it managed to do fairly well with the first episode, Everything Changes, debuting on the 22nd of October 2006, and the final episode, Miracle Day, Bloodline, debuting on 9th of September 2011. Now, again, it it proved to be quite popular. I mean, at the time, as I said, there was Doctor Who, which was the middle ground. Everyone would watch it. And Torchwood was kind of meant for slightly older audiences. And you know what? It did well. It, it, it focused on a good character that we liked, i.e. Captain Jack Harkness, and it managed to do quite well. It was ultimately cancelled, though. Well, it wasn't officially cancelled. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. 
because for the first three seasons, i.e. series one through to Children of Earth, it was kind of made and funded by the BBC, which is fair enough. For, for Miracle Day, though, another company was brought in, i.e. Stars Company, which kind of helped fund it and kind of keep it going through Miracle Day. However, after Miracle Day was done, apparently Stars Company wasn't necessarily that keen on continuing through with it. So, according to kind of showrunner at the time, Russell T Davies, it's kind of said that Torchwood is in limbo. Well, that's what they said in 2011. And after eight years, John Barrowman moved on to Arrow. So, yeah. I think it's fair to say that after eight years, Torchwood has been cancelled. But it had a good run from 2006 to 2011. Then, the other most popular game spin-off from the show, 2007's The Sarah Jane Adventures. I said, while Doctor Who was the middle ground and Torchwood was slightly older audiences, Sarah Jane Adventures was kind of meant to appeal to kind of children and teenagers, and, well, like Torchwood, it did quite well, running for 53 episodes across four and a half season series. From first, with the first episode, the... Invasion of the Bane, debuting on the 1st of January 2007, for New Year's, effectively, and the final episode, The Man Who Never Was, debuting on the 18th of October 2011. Now, while Torchwood was kind of effectively cancelled, Sarah J Adventures unfortunately had to end due to a rather sad, the rather sad kind of outcome of Elizabeth Slayton's death from cancer. As a result, the the fifth season that they were kind of working on, only half of it was finished, meaning only the first three episodes, of, only the first three stories of the Sarah Jane Adventures series five were actually completed, those being Sky, The Curse of Clyde Langer, and The Man Who Never Was. They did have further plans for the show, which would have included Clyde and Ronnie getting stuck on an elevator, kind of stuck between the 12th and 14th floors of an office block, uh, Mr. Smith becoming human and kind of a, tr- a battle against the trickster for the fate of Bannerman Road. But, as I said, sadly, they never got to complete those ideas and some of them were either recycled or you know, for other shows or sadly thrown out. But yeah, one, like Torchwood, the Sarah Jane Adventures, for, for the four and a half series they had from 2007 to 2011, it did well and... As I said with Torchwood, both of them are probably the most successful Doctor Who spin-offs. The last one that I feel I have to talk about is 2016's Class. Now, some people are debated on whether this is a good show or not. I personally enjoyed it. Class debuted in 2016 and ran for eight episodes, with the first with the first Tonight We Might Die debuting on BBC iPlayer on the 22nd of October 2016, and the last episode, The Lost, debuting on the 3rd of December. Now, while this one, kind of, while you could argue that uh, K9 and Company wasn't that popular, seeing as it only managed one episode, sadly, Class didn't prove that popular with people either. I mean, it, it had a loyal fan base, and there are some people who do enjoy it. But sadly, kind of, the numbers kind of weren't enough for the BBC to kind of justify continue making it. So, after the episode The Lost, it was kind of sadly cancelled. But yeah, you know, well, f- for the eight episode, it eight episodes it had, I think it was a good show. And Doctor Who spin-offs can be tricky. I mean, some as I've said before, sometimes that they cannot get quite right, such as K Nine and Company, or class, and sometimes they manage to strike gold with Torchwood or the Sarah Jane Adventures, so Doctor Who spin-offs can be tricky. Maybe in a few years' time we'll get another one. Maybe we won't. Until then, yeah, we, we can only hope to see what the future will bring. Until next time, see ya.